Hey everybody, it's Jamie from the Comic Book Showcase. This is episode 20. Today we're talking about conventions. Uh, actually, last weekend, myself and Rab, we were fortunate enough to attend uh, Toronto's Fan Expo Canada, and it was uh, a blast, in my opinion. Um, it's actually getting quite big these days. Uh, Toronto is, I think they said, nearly 130,000 at attendees. Um, so it's second only to San Diego in size, and uh, there's some things that uh, I didn't like about the show. You know, uh, the panels weren't that great, to be honest, and um, other than that, there was a lot of uh, good selection on the show floor, but um, today we're going to ask the question, are conventions fun? And uh, for whom, and for uh, what parts are your favorite? So um, I'll toss it out there to the team. Do you guys like conventions? What, what's your favorite part? I like conventions more or less, and this is coming from somebody who doesn't like to go outside his apartment very often. So <laughs> I like conventions for a few reasons, but I think my favorite thing about going to conventions is seeing all the costumes, because for me it's not really about like the show floor or the panels or Artist Alley, it's more about the spectacle of just being there and seeing all of the wacky people and we could do like a whole episode on cosplay and we probably will but the amount of time and effort that people put into that stuff into these amazing costumes it makes just being there super worth it kind of for me anyway which is dumb because we could all just hang out somewhere with people in costumes for free instead of paying a hundred bucks but so it goes. I feel like I always think I'm going to really enjoy conventions, and then I actually get there, and I'm like, oh my god, this is such a shit show. And a lot of it, like, it's very cool to me, because uh, I don't meet a lot of other people who are really into comic books in my everyday life, and it's cool to be around a lot of other people who share the same interests as me, but I feel like, at least for me, that never translates into, like, new friends or conversations, I never go and find like oh a whole bunch of people who really want to talk to this uh, this bearded fat stranger that they just met want to talk to him about Aquaman. It always I don't know, it's just something about it that almost feels like very isolated to me at the same time. And maybe just because everybody is a nerd, but it's like you go there and it should be this big, and in many ways it is this big communal communal thing. But it feels like everybody's in this little isolated social bubble. <clears throat> I think I agree more with Rab than Billy on this one. I really like going to cons. I think for me, the best part, I like going to Artist Alley. You get a chance to like meet the people that are making the comics that you're reading, and you get to buy things from them, like personal, like like I want a sketch of Aquaman fighting a turtle or something, and they will draw it for you. Like, <laughs> no questions asked. And I think that's really cool to get kind of that interaction with the, the creators that you don't usually get to have just reading and looking at their work. But on the other hand, there's, like you said, 130,000 people walking around, and sometimes you get in line for a thing that you didn't think you were in line for, or, like, you get in line to find out you're, you need to get in another line to go to the bathroom, and I kind of, I kind of hate getting in line to get in line. So I think there's pros and cons to conventions. And, and I think the big part of that has to do with uh, the fact that convention, these types of conventions have crossed over into the mainstream. So, you know, in 1995, even San Diego uh, was sort of a, a niche event, and, and mostly people that were interested in comic books, the classic big four publishers, uh, and that type of thing. But now, you know, with uh, movie celebrities and with um, all kinds of fandom pushing their, you know, wares, whether it's merchandise or the new show or the new whatever movie, um, you know, it's it's really, you know, straight up mainstream now, and I think that is a good thing. I'm not saying that there are fake geeks or anything like that, nothing to that effect. It's just um, more popular, and all the things that these conventions are trying to do are broad. Uh, they're not trying to stick to comic books anymore, and, and that's making it uh, difficult to, to, you know, staff these appropriately and to find venues that can host that many people. I, I feel like kind of a dick for having this opinion, and I, everybody always complains about the people who say, like, oh, like I, I liked it more before it was cool and mainstream. But I feel like I kind of did like these things more before they were cool and mainstream, not because I think having a lot of fans there delegitimizes it in any way, but because before it was mainstream, it was cheaper and less crowded. 
and that is always my biggest is that there are so many people at these things now. And I, I'm glad I'm glad that's like that's very healthy, that's great for the industry, but at the same it's just such a gigantic sweaty mob of people. Don't you yeah. think though? Don't you think that there's like more investment in these shows though? Like when when 150,000 people or whatever show up to San Diego, all of the major producers are there. All, everyone's trying to spend more money and willing to spend more money on content so that the shows are interesting. Like back in the back in the day, no one would go except comic book retailers. So you could find all of the comics you wanted to buy in one place. But by and large, that was the whole convention. Oh no, that's definitely that's definitely a great thing, and I love that it has this sort of almost like World's Fair mentality now. But I, I, I like I wish that they could be uh, slightly more separated out, so that when I'm going there for comic books, I don't have to also run into every single Walking Dead fan. And again, like that, those people, I'm really glad that they have a place to go. I just wish that I just wish that the whole thing was less sweaty. I think one of I want to speak to a thing that Billy mentioned a minute ago where the fact that there are so many people kind of isolates you even though you're surrounded by people who you're you share something with but well it's like it's like living in a big city like living in New York or living in Toronto if you're a Canadian person like me and you you have all of these people around you and you all have something in common which if you're in the city it's living in that city but you don't want to talk to those people they're just people who it's like an ant colony you're not friends well it's not like an ant colony because ant colonies are all friends <laughs> um, but Did it's you, kind of I, ironic about like a about a convention is that we all actually do have things in common we all probably would well maybe get along if we just interrupted someone else's conversation with our own input but <laughs> and, no... yeah go ahead and and try not to make those interruptions always start with well actually <laughs> yes i'm that i'm that matter. asshole so often and i hate myself for it well, Jamie and I had a nice experience. Well, I don't know if he thought it was nice, but it was nice enough for me because we, we were just sitting in line and then some guy, or we were talking about something and someone else sort of interrupted us and then we engaged him in our conversation and our conversation was kind of superficial, but it's still a shared experience with some stranger and maybe that stranger will one day think back and say, oh, those two guys were pretty cool <laughs> talking about comics. Maybe, maybe we... Maybe... This whole world of fandom and convention is not so isolated after all. That yeah, and I always feel like con the people at conventions are are real are like a fifty fifty split between the people who remind me what comic books can be and why this community is so cool and why I love it so much and how awesome it is, and then the other fifty percent are the people who remind me why I am sometimes embarrassed to say that I'm a comic book reader. Or at least shy about it. I do think, though, that that 50% has has maybe gotten better. I think when I first started going to cons in like high school, like 18, 19 years old, they were a lot smellier than today. I think, and I think people have got the the idea that, you know, maybe it's okay to smell at my house reading comics, but when I go out and I'm you know, lugging around a suitcase to get more comics, maybe I should take a shower first. And I think that's a great improvement for for everyone, you know, not just for uh, for comic book lovers, but for uh, for society. <laughs> so, so I don't I don't disagree, but I I think by and large, uh, it's not just about you know uh, specific hygiene issues. I think it's just the you know the age group of the average convention goer, the the profile of the average convention goer has changed from you know uh, either teen male slash older male to you know that sort of tween age, um, and even more women. You know, I, th I would argue that probably it's approaching 50-50 in terms of uh, gender um, you know attendance as well. So that's that's nice, but. Um, Sorry, I always, I, I always feel like I kind of sit, and I, I like, I watch the different social groups, and the guys who look like me are terrible 
All the other fat bearded guys, they're the ones who are like, like, put, like you're like, you don't really know, like, oh yeah, if you if you like really know this character, how come? And the kids who are, those like the teenage kids, the kids in high school are always the ones I'm most impressed by. Those like packs of uh, six to ten kids in uh, in manga costumes, all and they're always like the kindest, most supportive people I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, a couple of other things I wanted to uh, just talk about. Um, the first is uh, the panels themselves. Um, so what do you guys, uh, did you guys go attend any panels at the last? I know you guys were all at uh, San Diego. Um, and did you attend panels? And if so, what did you think about them? What, what panels are your favorite in terms of format or content? Um, tell me what you think about, uh, about that. Okay, uh, I think for me, at San Diego was the first experience. I really had to do more than one or two panels. Uh, just because of time commitments and things. And I really got to see a lot of stuff I wasn't overly interested in beforehand, but it was just kind of like, like let's just let's go to panels and we'll see what is, is available. And I got a chance to really kind of see what a lot of the other fandoms are about. Not that I'm necessarily going to become, like, uh, you know, really involved with these things, but it was a, a cool experience just to see and, you know, kind of get a little bit of behind the scenes and a little bit of, you know, just kind of, you know, cool video clips and things like that with a lot of fandoms I wasn't very familiar with. And I think that was a that was kind of worth it for me because usually I focus on on my own little things and this time I didn't. That's that's good. I agree. Uh, that's, I, I love I love Q and A style panels in theory, and I went to a lot of really cool screenings at SDCC. I saw Assault on Arkham early, I saw the Flash pilot early, I saw the Constantine pilot early. Those were all fantastic. My biggest pet peeve at those things also, the Q&A thing could be so cool. Uh, and I feel like there are a lot of people who have really interesting thought-provoking questions for but members of the cast or for these crusaders. They never get to because it's always mobbed with these like, these, uh, these, like fucking mouth breathers who just desperately want a celebrity to acknowledge that they exist, and they go and they wait for so long in line and take up so much time just to be like, ah, is 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 playing Green Arrow awesome? And or or really... two part two part question three part question. Uh, question number one: Can you say my name? Question number two: It's my birthday. <laughs> That's not a question. <laughs> I hate I hate those people so much. Yeah, I've I've definitely taken to leaving as soon as the audience questions begin. I, 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 I'm always filled with hope that somebody will ask a really smart, like, thought-provoking question that never happens, which is amazing, really. Just you think that by random chance. Yeah, a million, a million monkeys yeah. on a million typewriters, right? <laughs> My favorite panels are not the ones where... Uh, it's good. It's like, here's what the next big thing in the DC universe is. Those are my least favorite panels, especially <laughs> because I'm not a huge fan of spoilers. It's just like you go and... The Advertisement! Whole is, the panel! Yeah, the whole <laughs> purpose of going is just to have a bunch of crap that you're looking forward to spoiled for you. So <laughs> I really don't appreciate those panels. But my favorite panel, and I wrote an article about this on the DC database just the other day. You could read it. It's okay. And um, advertisement, the the podcast. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, <laughs> it was the DC Masterclass Art History panel, which uh, I went to one that was very similar at NYCC with Kyle last year, where it's just like three people. They sit there, they draw shit on an overhead thing, and you look, and you can watch them drawing it, and then they just answer questions about their lives and their process, and you're just like, well, this is informative, and I get to watch them draw stuff. Uh, one last topic before we before we sort of wrap up. Um, we, The four of us specifically have been to a number of conventions. I usually go to three or four a year, as well as uh, everyone else. So um, what are your tips for the new convention goer or the amateur convention goer to survive something like San Diego Comic Con, um, maybe we'll go around and ask everybody for one or, or a few of their favorite tips, uh, and then we'll close out the episode. So, Billy, why don't you lead us off? All right, Billy Harris with convention tips. Here we go. Uh, number one, if you are trying to save money at a convention. My biggest advice, a lot of people say, make sure you bring a backpack, make sure you bring a big bag, something like that. If you don't have a lot of money, don't bring a big bag. Don't bring anything. I always go with just myself because really if I am not 
willing to carry something around for the entire day, then I didn't really want it in the first place, and I shouldn't be spending 30 40 bucks on it. Uh, number two, it is so... Uh, you get so hungry and thirsty walking around all day. I personally always like to keep a hip flask of scotch when I go to conventions. I understand not everybody is into that. But they almost never check, word to the wise. As far as food goes, convention food is crazy expensive. Make sure you bring, I recommend a big sandwich like a hero or a hoagie and a giant burrito. Uh, stuff them in your pocket. You'd think they would get gross in your pocket, but leaving them in there all day, uh, they compress the they heat from your milk. body. Yeah, they make the flavors all melt together. It's one, It's amazing. And then you have that. You go and get that at like 10 a.m., and then when you remember at 3 p.m. when you get hungry, it's like it's like you're giving a birthday present to your future self. The point is you forget about it, and then at 3 p.m. you're like, oh, my God, I have a burrito. In my, this is the best day of my life. And then number three is sports equipment. Bring sports equipment to conventions. I have never understood why people like autographs. I think autographs are... Like, it's kind of cool that you get to talk to the person, but the writing, but for some so autographs, I think, are dumb, but other people think that they are important and take advantage of that. I have a problem. I love playing Frisbee. People are always losing my Frisbee. So I bring my Frisbee to Comic Cons, and I have Neil Adams sign my Frisbee. I have Jerry Robinson, the creator of The Joker, sign my Frisbee. And then when I take it places, I tell everybody, hey, be careful with that. Jerry Robinson signed it. Nobody wants to be the asshole who lost my Frisbee that Jerry Robinson signed. Suddenly, nobody's accidentally throwing my frisbee onto a roof anymore. Same applies with other sports equipment. That's my con advice. Thank you very much. I I feel like that deserves a standing ovation. <laughs> uh, Rob, do you have any advice you'd like to give the amateur con goer? Okay. Firstly, do not go on Saturday with a fever. That does not go well for you, as I learned. <laughs> last Saturday <laughs> at Fan Expo. Um, and also, don't be afraid to just talk to strangers. Talk to strangers, but also have some tact and don't be a total idiot. Yeah, especially if you're a small child. Please, if you're a small <laughs> child, talk to as many strangers as you can. <laughs> Go on, rap. <laughs> at a convention, it's okay. Everyone will be nice to you and not steal you away. And they have candy. Into a bag. Unless you're that girl who got lost last year. That's kind of insensitive. Anyway, <laughs> that's my advice. Talk to strangers. Don't have a fever. Got it. Okay, and Kyle? <laughs> I think I want to follow up on that. If you are a guy and you want to talk to these cosplay girls, that is acceptable. If you remember to treat them like actual human beings and not like creepy sex objects. Um, yeah, just remember they're humans and they want to be treated, you know, nice. Um, I guess shower! Case, yeah, make sure that you uh, take a shower, wear deodorant, you know, clean clothes. If, if you can smell yourself, everyone else around you can smell yourself, and when it's hot out and there's 100,000 people around and everyone starts smelling themselves and you smell the guy next to you, this to be pretty horrible, and uh, honestly, it kind of ruins the con for everyone. So, yeah, be clean. That's solid, solid advice. Uh, a few tips from me. Uh, first of all, uh, bring if you're going to try camp out uh, at panels, like you know, in San Diego, they have a what's called Hall H, which is this big external hall that fits like three thousand or four thousand people for all the big panels. It, and inevitably, you have to camp out for hours. If you're going to camp out, uh, I agree with Billy, bring your own food, but also bring a little mini stool. You can get these camping stools that sort of fold out, and they're really lightweight, but they can you know, give you something to sit on for you know, hours and hours of waiting. Um, definitely uh, plan plan ahead, so if you're going to try and do anything but the show floor in terms of panels or autographs, uh, figure out schedules, figure out where things are. And the number one tip I can give is walk the entire show floor on the first day if you're going to be there for multiple days so you know where everything is. So just do a walkabout. Don't try and buy anything. Don't try and look at anything. Just get a feel for the, the layout. Um, if it's your first time, getting a sense of the, the sort of where north is uh, is greatly helpful. So we hope you've uh, enjoyed these tips for uh, comic conventioning. 
uh, and we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Let us know, uh, do you enjoy conventions, and if so, what is your favorite part of a convention? Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us this week, Episode 20 of Comic Book Showcase. Uh, I'm Jamie. Joining me are uh, Billy, Rab, and Kyle. Thanks so much. Oh, and one more thing. Don't bring chocolate. That shit will melt in your pocket and ruin your entire day. Don't be like me. Remember, take my advice. Thank you. And pressed passes won't get you any tail. Just saying. <laughs>